What's up guys? We're going to do a gear review for you today. We're going to be talking about a new piece of gear. This is a messenger style bag called the uh, Receptrix and this is by Dissy Gear. And you guys all know Dissy Gear, right? Cricket. Cricket. <laughs> yeah, no. You probably didn't hear of them. Uh, like I haven't heard of them. These, this company is actually pretty new to me and I've only found out about them about maybe two months ago or so. A little less than two months actually. And uh, when I did find out about them, I wanted to uh, try the products to see how they kind of stand up to the the uh, the average companies. I mean, we have Maxpedition, uh, Spec Ops. Um, you know, th there's a variety of different uh, uh, gear companies out there. And uh, to be honest, they're all great. They're really they all have their their pros and cons. They all have their own designs for certain things. Uh, but I want to see how this uh, this new company, or at least new to me, uh, stood up to uh, to the rest of them. And so I picked this up. This is uh, like it's the Receptrix is the name of this bag, and it's a messenger style bag. And um, so far, uh, I've been loving it. Uh, I originally got this uh, specific style bag, um, which its intended purpose was for day hikes. Uh, now I don't do like you know extreme hiking or anything. I mean I'm talking just taking a walk in the woods, you know, taking a trail, one of my state trails or something local, just looking around, kind of lollygagging taking time to appreciate nature and maybe go out and do a little bushcrafting stuff like that you know I don't do any major mountain hiking you know anything like that um, but I wanted something that was kinda cool and of course uh, served the the function I needed it to for that specific task but I'll tell you when I first got this I went out for a walk and by the way you know I thought it was gonna be nicer out it's been crappy and raining and it's just been a really stinky uh, spring so far um, so I haven't got to use this uh, outside too often, but when I started my new job doing the um, the postal route, I found that I use this bag for work every single day, and it's become you know my my EDC bag for work. So right now I have it loaded out for work, minus a couple things that I can't take home. You know they have to stay at the post office, such as the postal scanner and you know stuff like that. Couple couple different documents, but um. I'm going to go over just how I use it, my thoughts, all that kind of stuff. I'll start off here with the uh, the boring stuff, uh, which is the specifications. Not everyone really is super interested in this, but anyone who's actually going to buy this or is considering buying this after the review, uh, they might want this information because they might have certain plans for certain pieces of gear that they want to put in here, and all these dimensions and stuff may be boring to you, but it's important to them. So let's get that out of the way. Um, the main compartment on the inside is 12 inches long by 9.75 inches wide and 3 inches deep. Of course, these are all the, the uh, kind of flat dimensions if you were to pack this bag. And you'll see, you know, once they start doing the review, some of the stuff I have in here. It'll actually, it'll bulge out and it'll get a little bit bigger. But if you're looking to put something in here and you're not quite sure, at least this will give you an idea. I mean, you can stretch this just a tiny bit. You can obviously, you know, fit something twice as large as the pocket, but... Anyway, moving on. The, um, the first uh, pocket under the flap is 12 inches long by 7.5 inches wide. The under flap gusseted pocket is 6 inches long by 5 inches wide and 1 inch deep. And the uh, under flap pouch is 4 inches long by 1.5 inches wide by 1 inch uh, deep. And, f and finally on the back there's a pocket. Uh, it's kind of your hidden pocket. I'll go over that in a second. That's uh, 12 inches by 8 inches. Um, as far as specifications on the uh, components used on this, everything's top notch. Name brand stuff, it, it's really, you got a thousand denier nylon on here, um, YKK zippers, and you have the UTX buckles, which are, like I said, it's just kind of the, um, uh, the industry standard for uh, high end tactical gear. All right, so I'm just going to compare this briefly to another bag, um, just so you can see the color difference. The bag on the left here is a straight olive drab green compared to the olive tan okay so imagine the the od green mixed in with like a uh, um, desert tan you know so you do have kind of a lighter green color so hopefully you can pick up the difference between them by itself it just looks like you know od green but it's not it does have that lighter kind of tan color i think the uh the olive tan is actually becoming kind of popular it's kind of a newer quote-unquote tactical color but uh, i like it it's uh it's nice. Like I said, occasionally I like color. I don't like everything. It's just black all the time. But anyway, all right. So what am I using this bag for? Like I said, I'm using it for work. Um, you know what? Let's see. What, what should I? How should I do this? Let's talk about. 
Let's talk about pros and cons real quick. Um, and get that out of the way. And then I'll talk, I'll show you actually what it's loaded up with. Because, I mean, I have it set up for, for Monday when I go back to work. Um, but anyway, pros and cons. Alright, pro. Uh, really, really well built. Stitching's great on this. Um, everywhere you look, you know, nothing's going to be falling apart. It's extremely rugged. For my needs, it's overbuilt. I mean, I'm not going to be dragging this through the woods like I originally thought, but even dragging it through the woods, it would hold up. It is top-notch quality. Um, so construction is great. The design, I think, is very good. Of course, you're going to get different bags for different needs, but this messenger-style bag or uh, laptop-style bag is its actually very, very um, utilitarian and versatile. You can use it for all different kinds of stuff. But uh, the, the other pros to this, I think, is just uh, it's compact, but it still holds enough. It's like that perfect size kind of deal. It's not, you know, I don't need a huge bag with a bunch of empty pockets I'm not going to use. However, it's not like really small and I'm overstuffing it. For me, it just happens to be perfect size, but, you know, it's, it's really going to all con come down to what you need a bag for. And if, if you're overstuffing a bag or if you have a bag that's too big for the gear you need to carry, that's just a poor decision on picking a bag. You know, you got to pick what's, what's right for you. Um, other pros on this so far has been um i would probably say price now the price on this is 74.99 is msrp uh from Dissy's website and i'll put a link in the description box to check it out and also if you want to check out their other stuff but uh i actually think that's it's a very good price for what you're getting um it's not a steal but it's not overpriced like some of the other gear out there and again i won't mention specific names or specific bags but Trust me, if you do your homework and look around, you'll find that it's uh, it's a very competitive price for what you're getting. Um, so I think that's great. It, like I said, it's not a total steal. It's not some cheap Chinese, you know, $15 eBay bag. Um, but you're not going to spend 100 bucks on it either. So it's kind of somewhere in between. I think it's worth the money. But anyway, uh, cons. I'm going to say this is not a con at all. This is just a neutral point I'm going to make. It comes with this really heavy duty uh, shoulder strap, you know, so it's, it's a lot more comfortable to carry, but um, I don't use it. In fact, I, I just put it on here for the review so you guys can see it. For this bag and for the gear that I put in there, um, the weight that I have, I don't need this. But I'm not going to say it's a con because that's just my personal preference. Uh, in fact, if anything, it's a pro that you have this nice padded uh, shoulder strap, you know, or, or attachment for the shoulder strap. Sorry about that. I guess I hit my 10 minutes. That's always fun when the camera shuts off in the middle of me talking. <laughs> anyway, um, I was just saying that I do use the uh, uh, shoulder strap. And uh, with with my specific loadout, um, it's, it's totally fine. It's actually very comfortable as is. I don't need this extra padding. However, if anything, this is a pro because now I get to recycle this. And I'm actually going to replace the, uh, the shoulder strap I had on my range bag. Because that does get extremely heavy with all the ammo and the guns and stuff I, I put in it. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a bonus piece. You can use this on pretty much any kind of uh, strap um, that you would need it for. Even luggage, you know. So I'm just going to recycle this, this specific piece. It's not needed. But that was just a neutral point I wanted to make. Um, not really a pro or a con. But anyway, um, I'm trying to think of uh, some cons to this bag. Uh, so far, I did have, um, there's an ID pouch on the front here. And I did have my work ID in here. Originally, when I first started carrying it uh, at work. However, the ID had, uh, it never fell out completely, but it kind of shimmied off to the side. Because of the fact that you, it's open to the side. You can see there, and there's no real, you know, Velcro or anything to keep it shut. So just with carrying around and throwing it in the car and just jostling it around a little bit, uh, my paper ID had actually shifted over a little bit. I saw it was poking out, and I pushed it back in, and then uh, about three days later, uh, it was sticking out again. And it, it almost got snagged and ripped on something, so I ended up taking it out of there and putting it back into my ID holder, which I just usually keep on my, uh, my belt. Okay, so I use this for my ID instead. And I don't want to talk about this stuff because it's not part of the video, but you guys probably already know. I got a little s beaner clip and, of course, a Spyderco, one of the bug models, as a little backup. Well, I do actually like having the ID on the bag. Um, having this little ID window on the front of your, your bag there, in my specific case, for my postal ID, I think it's a great idea. It's just uh, it wasn't really secure in there, so I was uncomfortable with having it there, and I decided to put it back how I had it before, before I had the bag. 
But um, I think it's a great addition. It just needs to be tweaked a little bit. Um, I think that if you want to keep the opening on the side, uh, just a little strip of Velcro right there would be fine. And it would be super secure. Of course, you could uh, have it accessible from the top and then gravity would kind of keep it in as well. But that might change the design of the, uh, the flap itself. So, you know, little design tweaks here and there. It's a learning process. You know, you see what works and... You know, if something doesn't work or something's inadequate, you just, you change it. But that's really the only um, negative to this bag or con I, I've come up with so far. Everything else has been fine for me. Um, it, it's comfortable on the shoulder, like I said, even without the extra padding. Uh, I think it looks nice. I thought the price was decent for what, I'm, what I was getting. Uh, it's been very functional and useful for me every single day. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really see any other cons as of right now. Of course, if I find something in the future, I'll let you know. But as of right now, with uh, a little over a month's use on it, uh, it's been great. It's been absolutely fantastic. So now I'm going to explain a little bit of what I actually use my bag for. Like I said before, I use it for work. Um, and uh, I have it loaded out right now. Uh, in fact, I just got home from work uh, not too long ago. And uh, I just here it is. Like I said, I'm, it's my work loadout minus a couple little things. And I'll explain that and where they go in there. But anyway, like I said, used to have the old uh, ID in the front here. Don't carry it anymore because it's just not as secure as I would like it. But on the outside of the bag here, we can see we have some webbing. And um, you can use it for pretty much whatever you want. In this case, I happen to have my uh, uh, pen in there, the embassy pen. And I think it's great. It's just really easily accessible on the outside. And I don't have to dedicate one specific spot for it. You know, when I'm done using the pen, I can slide it anywhere I want on the outside. And it works fine for me. And at work, and particularly when I'm using this bag outside of the car, delivering certified letters or express packages or whatever it may be, I'm always in need of a pen. So having a pen on the outside of my bag is extremely, extremely convenient. And, but of course, you can attach anything you want to this bag. You can actually just attach bigger bags right to the front of it. There's a lot of options out there if you want to uh, you know, make this uh, even more versatile than it already is. But anyway, so... There it is. Let me get the uh, shoulder strap out of the way. And by the way, shoulder strap, it's pretty standard stuff here. You got a little uh, D-ring on the side. Of course, if you want to take it off, it's completely removable. It's very, very simple to do. And snap that back on there. But anyway, on the front, everything on the inside stays nice and secure. I have two uh, buckles here. Again, these are the uh, UTX buckles. There is quite a bit of resistance to open these buckles up. I mean, I gotta tell you, it not it doesn't like hurt your fingers, but it's not just a quick little you know poke. You gotta really squeeze down hard for them to release. Um, it's a little bit of a nuisance, but in the long run, uh, it's keeping it more secure. So it's not a big deal. They're just heavy duty. But anyway, so we left our first flap up here, and now we expose some of our our first compartments. So we have two pouches here, and they look kind of like magazine pouches. And of course, if you were going to dedicate this to a, uh, a CCW bag or you know whatever your state calls it, where you're going to be carrying your uh, your firearm, of course you can use these as uh, spare magazine pouches. They look just like magazine pouches. However, in mine, because I'm at work and I can't carry on my firearms while I deliver mail, although I love to, not because I want to intend any harm on anyone, but because I like to be protected. But I'm not going to get into that because that's just against the law, and I do follow the law. So in this pouch here, I have my SOG uh, multi-tool, and uh, I've only used this once, and that was to uh, actually do my own little semi-repair on a, uh, a box, and it was just to rig it up so that the door would, wouldn't fall off anymore, but that came in handy one time. But it's there if I need it. It's good to have something and, you know, not need it, then need something and not have it. Uh, and the other pouch here, I have some hot sauce um, just because I thought it'd be funny to put it in there of course I don't really carry hot sauce around at work that's just ridiculous but what I do carry in that pouch is this it's a Benchmade uh, ER1T or ERT1 rather it was a little dyslexic moment there and this is uh, for cutting twine and plastic straps at work a lot of times the, uh, the well I call them flats but they're the uh, the magazine the catalogs they come bundled up so there's a quick little tool I can keep in my bag. It's accessible. I usually keep this on the chair by my case at work. And I just reach in the bag, grab this, flip it open, and I can quickly cut open my uh, uh, my magazines and catalogs and such. This also has a little flashlight in it. I did a separate review on this a long time ago. Happens to have a glass breaker in the back. 
um, but of course it's very rare I'll ever have to break any glass. But that has nothing to do with the bag, I just wanted to mention what I keep in that pocket. And play a little funny joke with the hot sauce. Ha ha ha. Okay, moving on. <laughs> on the uh, the left side here, we have all kinds of like mini compartments in here. Of course, you can see there's mesh, a couple spots for pens. I keep pen and a, uh, a gel pen here, as well as a mini Sharpie. Just never know when you're going to need it. Um, another two smaller po uh, pockets within, which currently I just don't use. Don't have a need for it yet. If I open this pouch up here, and by the way, all the pouches do have the double zippers, so you can access it from either side or, you know, close it up top, however you want to do it. But in here, we have a nice big area, and uh, I keep uh, different accessories in here for work, rubber bands, paper clips, all kinds of crap like that. Boring stuff, which I don't have in right now, because when I'm at work, I load it up. When I leave work, I leave it home. In the back here, in the mesh pouch, I just keep some uh, Altoids, just to have around. Not a necessity, just a nice little treat throughout the day. So, that's that pouch. And by the way, this pouch can get, you know, pretty darn big. Even zippered up. Here, let me see if I can maneuver a little bit over here. If I hold this like this, you can see, even even zippered up. I'll try to give you a good view of this. This pouch, I mean, you can pack this pouch up pretty wide. You have a lot of room in this bag. This bag is nowhere near packed to uh, capacity. But anyway, okay, so that's just the front, just quickly accessible uh, goodies. Then we have a pocket right over here. Obviously, you can see the zipper. Um, this is where I usually keep my postal scanner in there. Okay, it's out of harm's way. It's, you know, sun's not going to screw with the screen or anything, and it's not going to accidentally get hit. This is where I'm scanning packages with, you know, express mails, registered, all kinds of stuff. A lot of information, very important, so I keep it in kind of the the center of the bag not the main compartment i use that for something else which i'll show you in a second but that's where i keep the the scanner and in the main pocket i keep paperwork which actually i have to take out sorry about that guys i had to take out my uh my paperwork here because i can't obviously show it, it has private information on it but this is my lot list just line of travel it's basically the whole route and names and stuff it's a reference list for when i'm on route in case i have any questions or something but anyway, besides that, I also keep a notebook in here and a spare cheapo pen. This is what I usually give customers. I don't give them my nice pens to use. That's just for me. Maybe I'm selfish. <laughs> but um, keep a notebook in there. I keep all kinds of notes when I'm on route. Um, if a, bro a box is down, you know, if it's laying on the ground or if the door is broken or if it's too high, too low. I mean, there's just a million different reasons to take notes out in the field. Um, so I keep a notebook on hand at all times and I've been using it almost every single day So it's pretty handy to have um, But this is the main compartment on the back part here. We have two pockets This main pocket or larger pocket. I don't use for anything at all, but in the left pocket I Keep a flashlight. This is the Claris. I've been using this one a lot lately and I absolutely love this flashlight In fact, I did a review on it already um, It is illegal to deliver mail in the dark. So why do I have a flashlight? Well, it's just a backup flashlight. I only used it once and it's basically just, it's to have there just in case. I used it because I dropped something uh, underneath the car seat and I just couldn't see under there. So that's why I have a flashlight. But like I said, there's no real nighttime kind of use for this in this specific bag for my specific purpose. I just happen to have it there for as a backup. But anyway, that's what I use the main compartment for. By the way, there is a layer of padding on the inside here. Okay, uh, so if you want to use this main compartment, it's actually on both sides of these walls. So if you want to use this as a laptop bag, you do have that protection of having the padding on both sides. So no matter what you pack with these pockets, there is a little bit of cushion. So anyway, close that up and get to the secret compartment or the back pocket, which is kind of cool. But again, this back pocket is really geared towards using this bag again for carrying a firearm but on the back here you'll see here's our pull tab and there's a velcro strip that runs all the way across okay again zippers on the side now this is what sets this bag apart from most other bags from different companies is they don't have these zippers a lot of times and i don't want to name any names but uh all right i'll go ahead and name something maxpedition Maxpedition has a lot of bags with the CCW pocket, which is awesome. It's really cool. And you get the Velcro. But sometimes 
you don't have as much accessibility. With this one, we have the zippers on the sides is a great improvement. So you pull those down and the entire pocket comes right out. And look what I have in here. No gun, not on my mail route, but I have my huge canister of uh, Inferno. This is the, uh, uh, the bear style canister or crowd control with that pistol grip. Um, now I haven't used this yet. Uh, I don't have plans to, but it's there just in case I need it. In fact, uh, I recently got bit in the butt by a dog, and I'll very briefly tell you the story. I was delivering a, an express uh, letter, it's actually a large envelope, to someone's house, and I'm walking up to the door, and I see, I hear a bit, like a deep bark, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, because there's a lot of dogs, there's a lot of dogs everywhere, but in, on my route, it feels like everyone has a dog. But anyway, this, uh, this yellow lab, uh, which kind of looked friendly at first, rounded the side of the building past the bushes and starts coming after me and the biggest thing when you're getting chased i mean if a dog's a threat or any animal really you want to keep your cool if you start freaking out they sense if you're scared they sense if uh if you're aggressive that kind of thing so i pretended like it just didn't exist and i just kept walking and the dog's going nuts it's barking at me it's just woof, woof, you know real deep and i'm thinking oh jesus christ so anyway this dog it gets closer and it's kind of like trying to nip at me but it's not really touching me then i happen to notice it's got one eye and i'm like oh crap so i think because of the one eye missing or whatever happened to its eye um it lost its depth perception and uh it went to like kind of fake me out and as i was turning you know for the uh the front walkway and it just nipped me in the butt and it didn't break any skin or anything but i'm thinking oh crap you know dog actually bit me but anyway i uh uh, you know, finished my, my job at the door, had the person sign for everything, and I just walked away. And I actually later found out that, uh, and this is really interesting, but because of my unique situation uh, with the post office, that I have no rights whatsoever. Um, so what that means is that if I go to a house with uh, a dog, and the dog attacks me, I can't sue them. And if I hurt the dog, they can sue me. And the post office does not back me. So that's an interesting bit of information. So I won't be delivering to any houses with huge dogs just wandering around barking but anyway that's totally besides the point it's nothing to do with the review i just thought i'd share it with you <laughs> i don't know why um but yeah i have this just in case kind of a thing uh there's also some really sketchy people i mean some really really sketchy people where i deliver and uh it's better better than nothing you know what i mean uh i got my my knives on me and stuff but uh if i can safely take someone down uh without seriously i mean if i pull the knife on someone god forbid i'm on my mail route and someone attacks me or tries to jump me or something i don't want to take my knife and start slashing them up that that's all kinds of problems there i don't want to go there plus i don't really want to harm someone unless they intend harm on me so pepper spray and in this case just a you know huge canister of it is a great option because first of all uh as all all postal people are issued or supposed to be issued a thing of uh, pepper spray for dogs so a it's it's a uh, a self-defense weapon that i'm actually allowed to have even though it's a bigger canister um it's not extreme you know it's not like a, a taser or something or if i use a knife so i'm trying to think of the legal repercussions of actually being in some kind of alt alteration with uh, uh or altercation <laughs> alteration totally different word um yeah i'm just trying to think of the legal um, results that could happen with different options and I think this is my best option but anyway um, yeah that has nothing to do with the bag so I don't even know why I mentioned it but yeah instead of having a gun back here because I'm at work I have the the huge can of pepper spray but uh, I just really like the addition of these zippers because uh, particularly in a uh, you know a stressful situation and you go to grab you know this velcro and it's a thick heavy piece of velcro all the way across Maybe you go to struggle a little bit with it, but the second you get that open to this point, you don't even have to grab the zippers. It will actually pull down for you, okay? So you have easy access into that pocket. You're not messing around. Without the zippers, you know, pull this out. You have to reach down in there. You know, you just don't have as many options. So just boom, it's done. If you had a gun, uh, it would be on a you know, Velcro-backed holster in there, easily accessible, and I just really like that option. So anyway... That's pretty much it. I mean, uh, like I said, I've been loving the bag. Been using it every single day at work. It's been coming in handy every single day. Um, I'm glad I have it. 
other other bags that would serve this purpose for less money which is probably a lot of people's it's a very honest question uh, I would say yeah yes there's other bags that are like this you could probably pick up for maybe 20 or 30 bucks uh, instead of 75 um, they won't offer as much um, as far as durability you might get the same versatility you might get a bunch of little pockets and stuff but you'll find with time um, cheaper materials cheaper stitching it'll just start falling apart and you know instead of buying two or three bags over the next two or three years you know and paying the same price I just think figure it's easier to get something nice up front and uh, you know it'll last you many many years and I don't see this even with using it every single day I don't see this uh, having any issues or failing or, or tearing or falling apart anytime soon but of course I'll keep you guys up to date if something happens to it but as of right now I absolutely love it I would uh, I would actually highly recommend them uh, I'm very, very excited that I was uh, introduced to a new company. Dissy Gear has been great so far. In fact, I have one more of their products that I'm still still testing. It's still in review, um, but it might be a little while before you see a review on it because I, I haven't really been using that much. And like well, everything I review, I like to try to get as much use and uh, an experience with that product so that I can give you an honest and thorough review. But anyway, it's been awesome. And uh, Monday morning... I'll grab it with my coffee and my lunch bag, which is half on camera there, um, and go to work. So anyway, it's, it's been a great bag, and uh, if you're looking for that style bag, uh, I would recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching the review. I appreciate it, guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.